Number 49. On a hot, dry day, evaporation from a lake has just enough heat transfer to balance the one kilowatt per meter square of incoming heat from the sun. What mass of water evaporates in one hour from each square meter? Explicitly show how you follow Andrew's steps. Okay, great. So here we have now um, a square meter. Okay, And per square meter, they say that uh, the incoming uh, rate of heat is going to be a one kilowatt, right, per square meter, as I detailed. So remember, a kilowatt is just a certain rate of heat energy, gain or loss, right? It's just, a, it's a power. First, I know they're talking about kilowatts, but you know we like to, we don't really like to deal with kilo anything except if they're grams, right? So what I want to do here is convert that first into just watts. So one kilowatt is essentially 1,000 watts, right? Okay, and remember, a watt is the same thing as a joule per second. You know that power is in watts, and that is basically energy per time, and that's the same thing as joule per second, right? So this is, in other words, 1,000 joules per second, okay? So this is, this is the number of joules of energy that is basically approaching or coming in or being absorbed, however you want to think about it, uh, by this square meter every every second every single second all right okay now just keep that uh, in mind and keep that aside so now uh, we're also talking about evaporation and you know if we're talking about mass of water that evaporates blah 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 we're probably going to have to consider this formula up here on the top right so let's write that down so this says that the amount of heat energy needed to produce a phase change in this case evaporation will be equal to the mass of the object that is being evaporated, right, or or solidified or whatever the, whatever it is, multiplied by the latent heat of either fusion or vaporization. And this is a constant. you got to look that up. That's specific for the particular uh, object you're talking about. So now the, the, the uh, idea here is, um, so I can do this in a couple of ways. I, I, I'm just thinking about which way I want to do it. All right, let me, let, let me show you this method here. Uh, so... Mathematically speaking, whatever I do to one side of an equation, I'd have to do to the other side, right, to keep it the same. So what happens if I were to divide this side by seconds? You might say, well, why would you do that? Well, hold on one second. If I divide the left-hand side by seconds, what do I have to do to the right side? I also have to divide that by seconds, right? So mathematically, I didn't change anything. And whatever I do to one side, I did to the other side, correct? Okay. So now, let's basically now... Um, realize what we just calculated actually right or what not what we calculated but what what this all means so this is q over seconds right and seconds is a time value we know we usually use that in physics right and that would then equal the mass times the latent heat of vaporization since this is evaporating per time yes now what are the units here q per t I basically told you it's seconds here, right? I'm just changing. I'm going from the unit back to the, you know, the, the variable letter. And now I'm going basically back, so I might be confusing you. Hopefully I'm not. But this thing right here is basically a joule per second, right? Wait a minute. Hold the phone. Isn't that what we have over here? A joule per second? So can we just plug that on in for this value? Yes, you can. Yes, you can. All right? So basically now, this would be represent 1,000, okay? And that will now equal. I'm going to leave this as one now variable, so to speak, m per t. That's going to be the, representing the mass per time. And what type of time per second? Because if this is seconds on the left, this better be seconds on the right, just like I had over there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have this as m per s. I'm going to just put that in parentheses, Okay. And then that's going to be multiplied now by the latent heat of vaporization, and that is the latent heat of vaporization of water. So that you have to look up or memorize. It's going to be 2,256, but that's in kilojoules, so just add the three zeros to convert that into joules. All right? And how do I solve for mass per second? Well, I just have to do the division, right? So it's going to be simply 1,000 divided by 2,256,000. And we, here we get now a value of, and I'm going to write it up on the top right here. 
So the mass per second, meaning the mass of water that is evaporating every single second, that's what I just found, is going to be equal to 4.43, 4.43 times 10 to the minus 4 uh, kilograms, okay, kilograms. All right, so remember what I just found. This is literally the mass that is evaporating every single second. Now, let's connect it then to the final answer. What did they want us to find? They said, what mass of water evaporates in one hour? Well, if this is the mass that evaporates every single second, how do I find then the total amount of mass that evaporates over one hour? I would simply have to do a conversion. I don't know why I'm talking like this, but I like to think I'm talking like Christopher Walken, but I know I'm not because I can't do any impressions. Okay, so here we go. So this is going to be 4.43. I'm sorry. If if you notice, I get a little loopy when I've been doing this for quite a while. I, you know, imagine talking to a computer screen for a few hours. Um, you'd probably do the same thing. You probably feel the same way. So this is basically kilogram, right? This is really, and I really should have said over here, this is really kilogram per, per second, right? That's really what it is, okay? Um... Okay, so hopefully that's cool there. All right, let me just think. Uh, yeah, so this is going to be, this is this many kilograms every second, right? We were saying that this is the amount of mass every second, every single second that is being evaporated. So now I got to convert seconds basically into hours, more or less. So um, so ba I, I can do that in one step, right? You know that there's 3,600 seconds in one hour. And notice now when I take that value and multiply it by 3,600, it's now going to be about 1.5, uh, yeah, 1.59, so about 1.60. And that is now kilograms per hour, okay? So this is the amount of water uh, that is uh, evaporated, the mass of water that is evaporated per hour, 1.6 kilograms. So hopefully that makes sense. All right, not bad. Sometimes when you get these crazy units, right, to start with, and you're thinking kilowatts, kilowatts per meter square, what in the world? Where do I use that in a formula? What? That's probably the wrong way to think. Once you start getting really confused, start trying to draw some pictures out. So, you know, think about what a one square meter uh, thing looks like, right? And then figure out the amount of energy transfer. And also note that, by the way, by the way, Right, another thing I didn't state, but it asks us what mass of water evaporates in one hour from each square meter. So I knew that this square meter here was staying the same the whole time. So I just had to look. I can almost neglect that part, right? If you notice, I didn't use a square meter at all in any of my calculations, right? Because I kept it consistent that I kept talking about a single square meter. Guys, thanks for tuning in. I hope this helps. Please remember to help us out. If we if we were to help you out at all, just a little small, hit that subscribe button or like button or even tell your friends. That would actually be the best thing. All right, We, we would like to help as many people as we can, and uh, we cannot do it without your help. So uh, we do value uh, your viewership, and we value you guys as well. Hopefully you're doing well, all right? And we'll, uh, we'll help you with more problems in the future. Take care.